from the UK saying this is how we open it and it should be done. But um, unfortunately, again, the resources and the education is not that good. Um, okay. So if a minority of cases, then extensive investigations are important. And um, again, this is very popular in the States. Um, many parents will come to you and say, well, do you think our child has PANDAS? Have you ever heard of PANDAS? Yeah. It's hugely popular in Ireland. Um, pushed a lot um, in Southern Ireland. There seems to be a huge um, support group, which is important. For these patients, and um, do you, does anybody want me to tell you? If you want to know what it is, yeah. So, um, actually, I'll, I'll just get that. I'm to tell you. Okay. So this is very different from Tourette syndrome. Um, pediatric autoimmune neuropsychiatric disorder. That's what PAN stands for. Medics love acronyms. Um, it's because we've known kind of creativity. <laughs> we really, the majority of us don't, especially in the But um, so, so this is it. It's a very abrupt onset of OCD, concurrent presence of all these additional problems, and symptoms are not explained by other neurological disorders. This is very different than a child who has had an infection or has been unwell and is suddenly ticking. The predominant factor in this is the obsessive compulsive disorder and the neuropsychiatric presentation. Okay, it's, it's very, very, very different. Now we do know in PANS, which is pediatric autoimmune neuropsychiatric disorder, that there is an immune mediated problem which is um, causing a lack of control in a particular part of the brain, it's called the basic ganglia, um, to cause you to have abnormal movements very, very um, obsessive thoughts and um, marked anxiety. And it's, it's, um, we have several patients uh, with this disorder. It's very, very debilitating. Now, a lot of parents know about this and they want their child investigated for it. Um, and you can go and pay to get uh, this investigated in, in many places. Um, but it's a clinical syndrome. And, and um, only a very, very small percent of patients have it, but it's important to identify because if you identify it, then there is aggressive treatment, um, and that's where we give you these immunoglobulins into your body. Okay, so this is a little case of a patient like that. Um, um, so just, just note the difference there. It's, it's, it's parents will describe children with trans as overcome by a ferocious onset of obsessive thoughts compulsive rituals and overwhelming fears. That's different from presenting very acutely with multiple, with multiple tics, that's what we call it. Uh, okay, so um, one of my cases was a little girl who unfortunately presented, not um, to me but to somebody else, um, about a year ago. And uh, she presented with very explosive onset of obsessions um, and marked anxiety to the point this is a, a little girl who was going out to school, um, um, very interested in sports, and her parents wanted to switch. She woke up one morning, marked anxiety, wouldn't leave the house, started obsessing um, about things being put in the right place. Um, and to the point that she was withdrawn from school, couldn't go out outside the door, and she went to see a pediatrician, and she developed some movement disorders, and um, eventually uh, got to see us a long time later. And she has um, what we call an anti venom receptor on the body. So again, showing an abnormality occurring in the processes in the brain. Um, and we have, to cut a long story short, we've been able to treat this with immunoglobulins. Now, we can't reverse everything, but can it make things better? There is relatively good evidence that it can. So what I'm trying to say is there are lots of um, disorders which are like Tourette's, um, but are more than that. And that's why it's important to have both a pediatrician as well as a, a um, psychiatrist uh, to help. Okay. So, I'm, I suppose I'm trying to give you a little picture of how things are um, currently here in the north. Um, 
we know that children who present with movement disorders, shall we say, are very diverse. Children who present, who present with Tourette's syndrome are all very different. You've all got different types of tics. Um, you've got lots of different types of associated disorders, whether that's obsessive compulsive, ADHD, ASD. You've also different family dynamics. And so it's super important that you have um, clear joint care. Um, within um, Northern Ireland, the pathway of referral for ticks are very different. So how many of you were um, have been seen by CAMS? Okay, so that's shocking me though. <laughs> So, you know, um, because the mainstay of, of treatment should not be by a pediatrician or a medic, you know, it's so, so super important that you have appropriate um, access to therapy, so that you're not just stuck on medications. But that access is incredibly difficult. Really can't interrupt me just no, no, there. 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 there was a lady from CAMS yesterday representing CAMS, and um, well, I think she was representing, I'll we'll update her in trouble, she was a nice girl. Um, but she says, this is ridiculous, why are the neurologists sending them just, we can't do nothing for these guys, can't do nothing, yeah. um, this is ridiculous, yeah. and that's what parents are facing, <laughs> and <laughs> from here, yeah. So we, so I have not told me, uh, I just want to say the top, really? top <laughs> um, that it was in relation to a referral that I had to say, um, the child had no comorbidities, there was no CD inside it, and um, depression, was no mental health, it was purely the text. Um, okay, so we need to disagree on this. So, um, <laughs> um, there is a huge, my feeling is there is a huge um, problem with the concept of managing ticks. Huge problem. So, if you talk to children with ticks and they have a premonitory urge, that means they feel it building up, they feel it coming, then those children, the majority of them, can be suitable for habit reversal therapy. Habit reversal therapy, cognitive behavioural therapy, are the mainstay of treatment for a tick movement disorder. Not the comorbidities, but the but the um, uh, the actual tick disorder itself. And, and and you know, obviously, I don't know this case yourself, so that would be a very very unique case to have no associated hormonal problems, none. Because anxiety is a predominant factor in these uh, conditions. So, if we identify anxiety, surely there's um, a management for the anxiety. If you manage the anxiety, then the ticks go down. You know, so, you know, we recently had a, a joint pediatric and a um, slight anxiety experience about two months ago, and we have Professor Mary Robinson over from. And uh, London, they were absolutely fabulous talk. I mean, she's just, you know, I'm here, she's like, here. And um, absolutely phenomenal. She's retired now, and she's worked with Tix Tracks for years. And, and she made a very beautiful presentation, exactly showing, again, this. And uh, what was very interesting within that conference, I mean, it's lots of psychologists, and lots of psychiatrists there, was this concept. I can't do anything with a mood disorder. I really struggle with that. Um, and I think that's where our education comes from. And that's where we feel very, very, very strongly that we cannot treat children unless they have some access to um, those services within campus. So, yeah, so, um, you know, for us, we would like to have our own clinical psychologist who would also help with that. And certainly from being over in clinics in London and seeing how the psychology input uh, affects the children's lives, they are doing way more than I'm doing. All I'm doing, really, is getting a detailed history, making sure there's nothing else going on and, and trying to identify things. My role really is minimal. So to say, a pediatric neurologist should be treating them with medication. For me, that's completely wrong. These children, you know, you should not be on medication unless you absolutely need to be. And they're on medication. Sorry, you're here with the. I'm just going to say, sorry, I'm going to get on the interrupt. No, no, please interrupt. I'm the mother of a mother shadow who's almost 28 at the time, and I'm going to have a lot of people on the condition. But when I do the job, you're so pleased.
very difficult in defence of um, everyone within CAMS because obviously you can just, you know, I'm not going to be hated because um, I think since I started, I've said everything's a problem. Easy, my family's easy, my family's easy, and they go, what for? How do you want to target therapy? And I'm like, okay, so do I also have to tell you how to target therapy? I mean, surely, you know. I, I, I have to work within the limitations of my job, which is as a pediatric neurologist in the movement disorder. So I can take a history on what anxiety is, I can take it, but I, I can't diagnose that. That has to be done with you guys who are amazing specialists. I, I do not have enough knowledge, and you know my time is not best used in that way. Um, and um, I think one of the problems is, is, is the lack of understanding about what TS is, the lack of understanding about what the huge amount of uh, comorbidities they are, the lack of understanding the target of therapy for the child may be different from what we're using. So, a little bit like, uh, you know, um, Jackson brought out, you know, if the tick is not affecting you guys, well, please give me a break. You know, seriously, you can't change your brain just like if you're born with one short leg. That's suddenly not going to sprout two inches. You know, you know, it really, you know, it really, for me, this is who you are. It's just a different manifestation. It's a neurological manifestation of who you are. That's okay. You know, that's okay. But you have to understand the whole package. You have to understand that there are all these other difficulties associated with that. And I think people say, okay, you just want to stop the tech. Because it's embarrassing me. It's embarrassing who? And I say that to parents in the cross no medication you can get to stop them. Um, in my experience, which is certainly you know, nothing compared to, to most experts, is my experience, children in primary school are incredibly understanding here in the north. They are, you know, it's a really good environment, same, same in the south of Ireland. They're less you're going to be a little bit more what they do. But the majority of, of um, kids, and I've talked to kids in class um, in which there have been children with trip, and I'm saying, well, what, what do you think of such and such a person? Oh, yeah, he does a funny move in every small time. Sometimes he coughs. Does it annoy you? No, just who he is. Now, would you listen to the children? That's what the kids are saying, not what we as adults and professionals are saying. You know, you've got to stop that movement. You know, so again, we have to treat what the problem is. And the problem may be for the child that it's the anxiety that needs to be managed, or it's that obsessive nature of I need to, I don't know, this is obviously ridiculous, um, you know, you're stereotypical, I need to walk around in the circle, you know, 10 times up and down. But you know what? That might be the most restrictive thing for that child. And that is where CAMS come in. So, uh, oh, I have to get off message, sorry. <laughs> so, um, this is why this is in a joint, um, this is why it's so important to have a joint input. It's so important to have meetings like this in which uh, children and adults can speak up for themselves and say, actually, you know what, your perception of what needs treating is not my perception. You know, we have to listen to that. And uh, because ultimately, they have more experience than we have. And that's very difficult for a five, six, seven year old to tell us that. But I think it's really important to listen to Jackson and obviously all you guys here who say, actually, the most difficult thing for me is my social anxiety. You know, so, um, so I think, you know, from you know, my, my, obviously, I'm very passionate about it, but um, I think what's super important is. Um, the, you know, the setting up of this alliance here is fantastic. And I think parents, you have to empower yourselves to be looking for the right care. And that's very hard. You know, that's incredible hard to do because there are no results of that thing. That's the difficulty. And you know, sometimes that means you have to go to different places to go. Um, and I can't, I certainly don't envisage things changing within the north of Ireland uh, and certainly not within the south of Ireland for quite a period of time. And I think it will be really helpful, um, I don't know if, it's in fact, if there's some type of funding, fundraising you can do to access clinical psychology input in which, you know, I don't know, it can become part of some type of clinic or you know, some, something like that which will have way more input. 
um, would be unbelievably important. So I think we, we have to be more flexible in how we try and get our health, our health support. And because privately, it's incredibly difficult to get. So, and a lot of parents have asked me this. I, I do a private technology clinic. I only do one once a month. Um, and it's just me. So I, I can make a diagnosis of things and tricks, but I and, and luckily I have a psychologist who's interested in it. I'm not trying to get my psychiatrist friend to join as well. But it, it's, it's very difficult to access that team. You know, ideally what should happen, if, if it could happen, is we'd all be in the one clinic and sorted. But it's just incredibly difficult to do. Um, but it's my aspiration. Yes. Can I, can I just share a story? Mine's quite short. Um, my daughter Emily is eight now, but two years ago we actually attended your clinic in Hollywood. Okay. And it was the first time that we met someone who understood exactly what was happening. In doing so, you wrote to our GP and recommended a CAMS referral. And within, it was a 16 month urgent waiting list, and Emily was referred. And all of her care has been through Craig Alvin Health. I cannot thank them enough for what they've done for us as a family, emotional. Um, we have a holistic approach. It was a clinical psychologist, it was um, the consultant pediatric. Um, we have a referral with an OT who worked with Emily for 16 weeks. She came to the school twice to her classroom to see her in her environment and what could be done. Emily reached a point where social, she was very social we child, but she reached a point of anxiety and OCD and a really strange thought processing. And 12 months down the line, they decided not only the text didn't bother us as a family, Emily wasn't hurting herself so much with many of them, but it was the social aspect with the OCD, the anxiety, ADHD, she loves gymnastics by the way, <laughs> and never stops all that. Um, 12 months down the line, they then decided, look, we feel plummeting would be good for Emily, and it'll be a low dose, and I was like, please don't change her personality, it won't, it won't, and it didn't, and she's on three meals a day, she's a different child, she just, she has some text during anxious periods, but what I wanted to say was the holistic approach through CAMS, through the entire team coming around, mm -hmm. understanding Emily and the school coming on board, we have not been a positive message. And, and I think that, I mean, I, I mean that's so lovely and I'm so lovely for everyone to hear that actually is what is reflected back by parents and um, children and young adults who have been able to access that service. So many will come back and say, You have no idea the differences this made to my life. Yeah. You have no idea. You know, the stress out in the whole house is you know, and, and, and that's why we, we need to try and find some collaborative approach. And I think it, 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 it's, again, it's, an edu it's a medical education thing. I'm conscious of time, sorry. So, sorry. Any, any, no, no, any more questions? Any, anything else to share with me? Yeah. Hi. Sorry. My GP is the Royal Sugar Last Year, so I have a moment. Yeah. So, what happens with the, from a practical viewpoint, what happens with the referral is first of all in neurology because there's only three people yeah. they don't accept referrals from GPs, so you're seen by a pediatrician. Now, I don't know what their waiting time is, but I, it's not usually that at the time. Oh, yeah. I checked it last month again, is still okay. is it neurology or pediatrician? Mm -hmm. So you, you do you see the general pediatrician? Yeah. yeah. I don't think you really know what to do, really. I think about the GP and tell them. Yeah. So this, what will happen is if a referral is sent like back to the neurology, then it's sent back to the GP to say yes, you need to be referred to a pediatrician because the waiting time to see a neurologist he has to eight, 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 nine months, maybe. It's about eight or nine months. Adults, it's 18 months. Yeah, adults, it's insane. He said he hasn't done anything back. That's the reason why. But if I knew you might have made a point with the GP and asked them to be seen by the pediatrician, and at least then access the services. Just quickly, at what point do I have a chance for a new uh, but again, my understanding is, and um, again, I'm probably completely wrong, is there's a different grading system and different people who grade them actually different in the time. So I'll let you answer, you're the expert. Yes, Oh, yeah. 
So I think that sometimes the perception is that take it from the medical home, this is where the issue comes and so I become smart in that I'm learning from our consultant psychiatrist how to make a referral now. And so how do you make the referral is in a very specific way of saying I feel this child has a tick disorder, they've got a chemical the urge, and I feel it's a very suitable for having a person there because they'll come to be in the therapy, so management of their anxiety issues. If you send a uh, referral to CAM saying the child has a tick disorder, then some in some areas, not all, and um, my blog work to do is phenomenal. I am I mean honestly the CAM service is amazing. Um, but sometimes the perception is well that's a medical problem for the lapse of medics. So you know, it may be the way in which the letter is phrased. So sometimes you could educate your um, yes, two from the TV and one from the bar. Yeah. They, they probably, I mean, I, I didn't know until about six, seven months ago how to make a referral until I understood how it works. So sometimes it, it's, and, and, and certainly we've had referrals back from um, Cam saying, I, I really don't know what we want to see in this child. I mean, you, you know, so, and I can understand that. Um, mm -hmm. it, uh, they try our system, you know, and, and it's, it's a mess of information. You don't need to do it for that referral letter yet. Yeah. Am I right there? You know, oh, if, yeah. if the information is not in the referral letter, then you don't know. I'm certain that's the same with us in the technology. You know, if the letter says, um, I have this child who has, you know, a movement problem and they're managing well and wouldn't mind seeing them, well, that's obviously going on a non urgent routine. Yes. If you have a letter saying, I'm really concerned, this child has a tick disorder, they're have tried and um, Therapy, they're not managing in school, it's now a crisis in the family. I'm going to be working with that family to see. So sometimes it's as good as the, isn't it? Um, the ones from the GP, but it's Again, you know, this is why um, it's so super important to have understand where the, where the gaps are and the tricks to jump over those gaps. So, you know, we do have, this is a free health service, remember that, guys. You know, in the state, you can pay for every single thing. This is free. Now, the concept of the science with respect to that is different. And at the start, a lot of people are used to saying, well, if I want treatment for my child, I have to go out and get it. The traditional the psyche um, in the north and in England is very different in that we have a national health service and national health service can provide. Unfortunately, there are massive restrictions on national health service at the moment. Massive. And so, you know, to try and find out the ways around that, then um, there are certain tricks. So this is why, you know, information like this. Sorry. I have a question for you. There's a mom here a little bit later that she has a child that has read and she was seen at home camps. And um, her brother and her father both have ticks and she said, oh, you know, they tick too. And they said, oh, no, it's not genetic at all. So obviously there is not a lot of, um, I think, knowledge that's getting through. But how do parents deal with that? Is there a way to help their kids? Is there someone that they can refer them to um, in order to sort of facilitate that body of knowledge? I mean, again, again, I'm sure. I, I, again, I think that's something that you know I've been we've been thinking about in the last like, six months. And myself and Tammy and Tammy Hedley um, have can be putting our heads together about trying to set up a national teaching program and um, for CAMs and for pediatricians and neurologists. So we've done something very similar for epilepsy in which we have two days of epilepsy and saying anyone with epilepsy is very common. Anyone who has epilepsy or treats epilepsy, then come to this two-day program, it costs X amount of money, or trust will pay for it, and we educate and we get people trained up in giving the delivery of it, and we roll the thing out, and it's done in all parts of England. And that has transformed epilepsy care, transformed epilepsy care. And, you know, my, I was chatting to Tammy about it recently, and I said, you know, Tammy, we should do this for ticks. You know, we should have, you know, a neurologist speaking, we should have a psychiatrist speaking, we should have a patient speaking, 
stroke um, a TDS person, which is an education psychologist, and you just roll it out. Um, and I, I think probably that's the only way of getting through. And obviously, Jackson, you probably want to um, Also, if you visit, so there's the transaction in the UK. Um, if you call, they'll, they'll be so helpful for information. If you call and you ask them for the information, they will do their best. Or if you go to the Tourette Association of America's website, which is Tourette.org, I believe, Thank you very much.